that. So, yes, I don't know if you know, but uh, this morning uh, here in the UK, the clocks go back an hour. So we're supposed to get an extra hour in bed. But of course, I still woke up at the normal time because Jock's clock doesn't go back an hour, does it? <laughs> so uh, so took him on a walk in the pitch black. And then as, as we were coming along, we, I, I stupidly took this one bit of embankment and managed to slide down it on my backside. So I'd be picking bits of dirt and grass <laughs> off the back of my trousers. So that was bad enough because I'm, I'm running late because obviously we, we'd said, well, we were supposed to meet half an hour ago. So I do apologise for that. And then, damn me, if, if we, we're coming up Langhoff, the, the path that leads to Langhoff Lane, he's off his lead and he was fine to begin with. And then when you get to the top of the lane, you can either go right to my house or left. But he decided to go left. So I called him and he saw me and he just ignored me and just went waltzing on up, up the lane towards the uh, old Borders College. Uh, eventually I called him, called him and he, and he appeared. But it was like so defiant. I am not coming to you. You have to come and get me. Put me on my lead. He just sits there and, and stares at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody else that listens to you have oh yeah absolutely <laughs> so so well trained you know no he's uh he's, he's he's normally he's pretty good but he he gets these whims every now and again where he, he feels that he you know what why you know i tell him to do something he looks at me as if what why would i want to do that <laughs> yeah i mean really you could do a a scottish version of where's wally yeah do you know what I mean? like yeah, i mean you've got it happening anyway but i think so yeah, yeah. You make a great kids book yes <laughs> where's jock <laughs> where's jock um <coughs> excuse me yesterday evening i uh, had a great chat with uh, the one and only pete dassey um quick question according to pete dassey on a quiet night in two rivers Wisconsin, what can he hear? I know this because I peek into your little combos. <laughs> your bears. Crying. <laughs> <laughs> and do we mean the wild bears in the woods or do we mean the Chicago bears? <laughs> well, if you can hear the Chicago bears, like he should be in the Guinness Book of Records from where he is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how frightening to be able to hear bears. Like, let's just break that down a little bit. <laughs> No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's meant to be the, the Chicago Bears crying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking about um, the uh, sporting rivalries, um, big news overnight, of course, coming out of Australia. I'm afraid you guys got hammered by England. I don't know if you saw that. Um, which sport are we talking about? Cricket. Cricket, mm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that's that's been happening on and off for how many years? No, it hasn't. It, it hasn't. It's, it's normally Australia that hand out the hammerings. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about yeah. that. Like, to be, to be quite honest with you, a cricket, like I'm a tennis fan. Yes, I, yeah. I'll watch tennis wherever it's played in the world. Yeah. But cricket to me, like guys just standing still for up to eight hours in the hopes that a ball will fly past them, yeah, kind of leaves me wanting a little. So, yeah, I don't uh, – not actively involved in cricket but having said that you know it is a rite of passage over here particularly the boxing day test yes. in melbourne um you know all my brothers growing up would have been there on a boxing day and probably my older brother who lives in australia would be there every boxing day yeah i mean it's um the, the actual competition we're on, on, on about is the 20 over a side so the, so the games the, the actual innings take about an hour and a half to do it is very very mm -hmm. exciting um and the, the, the big news coming out of Australia, of course, that the, the most famous cricketer to come from Melbourne would be... Shane Warne. Exactly. And he has come out and said on Twitter that he questions whether Steve Smith, the former test captain, should even, even be in the team. So yeah. it's so it's it's causing all sorts of ructions over there in, in Australia amongst the <laughs> amongst the cricketers, you know, it's uh, oh there's so many ructions here in Australia. And yeah. <laughs> we can give we can give, you know, the US a run for its money at this at this point, I think. Yeah. Um, particularly down here in Victoria. Well, of course in, in Melbourne as well, you've got uh, a whole load of um, 
Aussie rules teams, haven't you? You know, I mean, we went to Marvel to see St Kilda, and I've always followed their results. And uh, poor Doctor Silkman, he he supports the Adelaide Crows. Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame for him, for the poor fella, you know. I mean, yeah. Adelaide Port are doing really well, but I think the Crows started off not too bad, but then drifted back into yeah. their old ways. And uh, you know, I, the, the trouble is, you can't choose your team, can you? Well, you know, you're, you're sort of born into it often, aren't you? You know. Well, you, you are and you aren't. I, yeah. I remember when I was growing up on the uh, Mornington Peninsula, and we're talking eighties here. Um, we all supported Carlton. Right. Um, that was our team was Carlton. But um, having gone overseas and then come back again, and that was back in the days of VFL, so it was only contained to Victoria, the Aussie yes. rules competition. Um, but when we came back from, from Ireland, my husband, you know, he was like, okay, I have to pick a team. And uh, himself and my brother-in-law, who had come over as well, they liked the theme tune to the Richmond Tigers. Right. So that set in motion a yeah. uh, years long um, membership of the Richmond Tigers, which now my youngest son, you know, he's a member. So wow. they, they created a new tradition. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's look, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? In sports, sometimes it's going well, sometimes it's not going so well. And you, you've just got to follow them through, through thick and thin because, uh, and enjoy the good times when they happen. So, I mean, as I say, as far as the cricket yesterday, you know, got to enjoy that win because it's not often that, uh, as I say, uh, Australia get hammered by the, by the palms. But, but I mean, it's you know, it's 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 it's, it's one it's one tournament, and uh, yeah, that's that, that that would be my sort of number one passion would be speedway cricket, American football, Aussie rules football. Uh, rugby, you know, that, 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 that would be my sort of main, main lot. You know, there's a lot of other fringe sports that I follow as well. But uh, anyway, yeah. we're, we're completely digressing, of course. 100%. Today, today, <laughs> uh, yeah, is the 16th anniversary of Teresa Holbuck's disappearance. Yes, indeed. And, and, and I, I choose my words carefully there because... I don't know about you, but as far as I can tell, they have never definitively proven that that really was Teresa's bones that they found in the burn pile. Um, I know Steve Drizzen has quoted that, that he won't entertain any any possibility that they aren't Teresa's, but I, I'm sorry, it, I, I feel he has to do that from a sort of respectful lawyer point of view. Um, as you know, I'm not a respectful lawyer. Um, and I'm, I'm just a commentator. Um, and, and, and I don't know, how, how, how do you feel about that? Or is it something you try and avoid talking about? No, not at all. I think, you know, perhaps Professor Drizzen and, um, you know, the, the legal players in the case may be privy to information that we're not. So yeah. um, there is that. But personally, I believe, unfortunately, Right. That Miss Halbach is dead. Mm -hmm. I think there would have to be a massive conspiracy on so many levels. And, and you know, we, we talk often about the levels that we're aware of mm -hmm. as it relates to Stephen and Brendan. But I think the whole idea that Miss Halbach is alive is just too far of a stretch for me. I, okay. I can't entertain it, you know. But listen, you know, I appreciate that people have. Uh, different theories on on what's happened um i mean and and you know out of respect for Teresa halbach what happened to her i believe was horrific um but that's if we're to believe the state's narrative mm -hmm. right which was fed to brendan so there's there's a lot that isn't straightforward in in how i look and and think about what's happened to Teresa halbach but at the same time, you know, um, October the 31st, and this is something that strikes me every Halloween, yeah. that I, I can't believe it would be a date that Brendan and Stephen could celebrate, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, perhaps in Brendan's innocence and his, uh, you know, his childlike innocence that he doesn't go to that place. Mm -hmm. But for me, like, I, I, I certainly can't celebrate Halloween in terms of, you know, the, the MAM community because yes. it, 
such yeah. a horrendous date for for all of them, for the three of them. And that's if we are to believe, you know, the state's narrative of, of what happened to Miss Halbach. Um, but yeah, do, do I believe she was killed? Yes, I do. Absolutely, right. I do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here, certainly here in the UK, um, certainly when I was growing up, Halloween was just, um, for me, it was just a night when there was one or two um, people went around trick or treating um, and, and basically just getting treats. You know, I can't remember any. I can't remember ever asking somebody, "Well, come on, then tell us a joke, and I'll give you a sweet sort of thing." But it was never, it was never a big thing because on November the fifth we have Guy Fawkes night, which yes. is huge. You know, so ha Halloween for me was never something that that, that we celebrated. Um, but I mean, certainly speaking to the dude, and 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 we. We we hear, don't we, that uh, Teresa Holbrook was going to get dressed up as a as a cowgirl and go to a party um, that night um, in, up in Green Bay. Is that right? Have I picked yeah, up that right? Yeah. So it's yeah. clearly something that they celebrate more in in America because you know they don't have Guy Fawkes night. No, that's right. I mean, Halloween originated in Ireland, right? And the 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 US took Halloween yeah. and. Um, it became something much bigger. I mean, it's on par with Christmas, really, isn't it? In the way that people celebrate it, yep. they, you know, and, and they get into it. Like yep. living in Ireland, um, very much, it's a big deal in Ireland as well. Um, right. You know, it was, it's about bonfires, the kids get dressed up and whatever. In Australia, um, where I am anyway, like there's a couple of houses that may have been decorated, but on the whole, it's it's not it's not a deal over here. And I'm pleased because I'm just one of those people. I don't like Halloween. I never yeah. have. Yeah. Um, it just gets in the way of Christmas for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I suppose I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate people get into it and and whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm it's each to their own. You know, P possibly a bit like. Christmas and New Year, Halloween is for the kids and Guy Fawkes night you with your bonfire and your fireworks. But then, you know, when it comes to Christmas time, you know, Christmas is the big thing when you're a kid. But for the for the grown-ups, it's the adults. It's more New Year's Eve, isn't it? It's Hogmanay as we have here in, yeah, yeah. in Scotland. Um, Mind you, you do see the odd dodgy costume for an adult. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. And I, you know, I, I'd be remiss not to to talk about the fact that women are, are um, very much stereotyped in the type of costumes that come out at Halloween. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to, oh, that was it, yes. Yeah. So I have to go back a little bit um, and find a, a little article that I thought was very interesting. Um, and, and I don't mean to, to look at all of it, just a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. because, because it, to me, it said something about um, the, the mentality of uh, prosecutors. Can, can I share it with you? It's, uh, it's nothing... Uh, tricky or complicated I'll just click on that click on that um, this is a, a retired attorney disbarred by a court um, I'll just quickly read it for you Maryland's highest court has disbarred retired Hartford County State's attorney Joseph Casilli for withholding exculpatory evidence that surfaced in a double murder case and lying about it over the years I mean what does that mean mind us off mm -hmm. you know um, Annapolis uh, Maryland's highest court has disbarred retired Harford County State Attorney Joseph Casilli for withholding evidence. That's... <sighs> for goodness, why do they do that? Why do they have to do the, the, the strap line and then repeat it word for word? Yeah. Have you, have you noticed that? And sometimes they'll repeat the same thing three or four. Anyway, the Baltimore Sun reported that Casilli learned of the court's decision Friday from a phone call by the newspaper. He wasn't even bothered. The Maryland Court of Appeals found the former prosecutor lied about documents that undermined the credibility of an FBI agent on the case. The judges noted Casilli, a Republican, served 30 years and retired in 2019. The judges wrote that disbarring him would prevent his possible return, not that he's planning on any return. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, here it is. This is the bit that I thought was very interesting. Casilli maintains that he 
did nothing wrong, but rather fell into the whole anti-criminal justice movement where the cops are the bad guys and the prosecutors are the bad guys. I mean, what, what, what do you make of that? Oh, I think it's just a cop out, isn't it? You know, you know but, um, but, but, but I'm, I'm thinking, you know, is, is it a case that, you know, these, these prosecutors, they're in their own little world where they, they, they somehow, you know, Ken Kratz type, the thinks that thinks that they're doing this wonderful job by even if there's the, the slightest chance that somebody might be guilty, they're going to pursue them. And then they're going to, you know, that the fact that in, in, in so many cases, they knew who the, who the prime suspect should be and yet overlooked him. They knew Gregory Allen was was the likely attacker of Penny Penny Bernstein, but decided to to look the other way. Um, it's it's it just beggars belief. But you know, as, as I say to me, that 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 spoke of that prosecutor has this attitude that it's that it's him against this this what did he call it? Because it didn't quite it, it didn't quite make sense. The anti uh, anti criminal justice movement. Yeah, yeah. Who would be the main instigators of the anti-criminal justice movement, um, is it people like us that are saying, you know, this has got to end? Yeah. I think, I mean, coming at this as not having read this or digested sure. this, so. perhaps, perhaps, you know, that's talking to um, reformers, mm -hmm. people who are out there looking for reform in the system, in, in particular in, in regards to police interrogation tactics. You know, um, I mean, obviously he was not too concerned. He didn't even show up. Yeah. So he wasn't really concerned that there were going to be any repercussions for him. Yep. You know, so there's there's an absolute complacency there. Um, but yeah, you would imagine the anti-criminal justice. But you know, like those that type of wording, that type of language, is just speaks to, you know, the divisiveness that people. Um, empower purposely to fit an agenda mm -hmm. and I think we see that across all sections of society at the moment more so than than ever before you know um obviously we I think it was just a couple of weeks back we had also uh, Brendan's birthday Did, were you able to celebrate that in any way oh yeah good for Brendan yeah for sure yeah um uh I put up a couple of billboards for Brendan's birthday. I had uh, spoken with Brendan and told him I was going to do that and he loved it. Um, so if that brought him an ounce of hope or, you know, or joy in those moments, then uh, it was well worth it. It was well yes. worth it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and once again, using the opportunity not to say happy birthday to Brendan Dassey because Brendan Dassey can't see that billboard. Um, so it was once again pushing the same messages. Um, consistency is key. If we have too many messages out there on on something as as you know, um, as seen as the billboards around Wisconsin, yes. too many messages will just will uh, murky the water. We've got very clear messaging. Yeah, I, I mean, it's uh, as you say, the message does have to be clear and. Uh, you know, as uh, John Farrak once once wrote, you know, no one no one goes to Wisconsin and reports about the, the you know the fact that the the Packers suck, even though they did for a couple of years. You know, you've got to be, you know, you can't just put up a billboard and say, you know, Eva's, you know, you're a, you're a twit or something, you know, or, or something no. derogatory. It's got to be something that, um, yeah. you know, as you say, is supporting Brendan and 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 really trying to say to Governor Eva's, you know. Will you look at this case? Will you do, do, do you think he's even looked at it yet? Or do you think there's there's bureaucrats below him that have that have kept him away from it? No, I think he would be acutely aware of Brendan's right. Case. Okay. Um, acutely aware of it. Um, you know, it's if if I look back, say on the billboards that we've done since October last year, there's been about 25 billboards all yep. up. Um, scattered around Wisconsin and we know this is a governor who's very rarely in his office mm -hmm. so he would be on the road so the whole whole idea of trying to get the messaging in those places is to meet him where he goes um, even though we, you know this year we had Kelly deliver the open letter directly to his office we had the um, the flyover over as well which was yes. more a very um 
was the word. It was a tangible show of support mm. where Governor Evers lives, right? Not where he physically lives, but where the lawmakers mm. live. Yeah. Um, and it was a great photo opportunity. Let's not kid ourselves. So, yeah. Um, no, I think, I think Governor Evers would be acutely aware of Brendan. Um, you know, we've seen people out um, and, and posting YouTube video, videos of themselves going out to meetings where he's meeting people in the local communities and bringing up Brendan's name. And he's like, I'm not talking about Brendan Dassey today. And I'm like, yes, you know what I mean? Like you might not be talking about him today, but we know that you're hearing about Brendan all the time. Mm. So, you know, from Twitter outreach to, you know, uh, Instagram outreach, all those types of things, even the email apps. I have hundreds of people who participate in those email apps. So, you know, at any given time, he has four to 500 emails hitting the inbox of mm. Governor Eva's office at the same time on the same day. You know, so he's acutely aware of Brendan. I'd say Brendan Dassey's name is a pain in his ass and will continue to be until he actually, you know, addresses the situation and, stops being politically timid mm -hmm. you know that that's what this is about as far as i'm concerned um you know he he's quite a progressive governor in so many other ways but when it comes to cross criminal justice reform and he ran on it he's done nothing in that space mm. whatsoever now i know he met some you know he met some resistance this year with um the bills that he put forward from the from the legislator but come on like you know you're, you're the top guy mm -hmm. you've got this you've got this executive power mm -hmm. that you don't need buy-in by you know you don't need to cross the aisle you don't need buy-in from the legislator to do this type of yeah. thing to do the right thing so it's about it's about governor evers um you know just stepping up like for god's sakes you know? Yeah, I mean, that there is some speculation that with next year being his last year, that could be the time when, if it's if it's clear that he's he's not gonna he's not gonna yeah. stay on either because he decides four years has been enough or he's not gonna get voted back, he 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 might decide to look at Brendan and say, right, you know, I'm I'm doing this just to just to spite those that, uh, that 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 want to want to keep him locked up. I don't know if you had a chance to um, see that excellent article by John Farrakh, where he talks about why he he thinks quite clearly the Supreme Court are not going to want to look at Steve's case. And that is purely to try and shut down any chance of a making a murderer number three. Any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah. I, OK. With all due respect to, to John, um, I don't believe the Supreme Court would be interested in any way, shape or form of controlling what Netflix produces. Mm -hmm. um, why would they why would they want to shut down uh, making a murder a three? I mean Stephen's not near the Supreme Court. Are you talking Wisconsin Supreme Court or are you talking SCOTUS? Yeah, Wisconsin Supreme Court. I mean it was it, it, you know Okay, that, that's a little different. Yeah, yeah, I mean what 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 he was talking about was the fact that you know the um the, the last thing that Wisconsin you know <laughs> The, uh, the sort of people that want to keep Steve and Brendan locked up, the last thing they want would be a making a murder number three, where we actually see Kathleen Zellner having getting a, her evidentiary hearing, and you know yeah. they would yeah. want to shut it down. And it and it just it just it grates with me that all those years ago when Sheriff Herman Robert Herman said to me, he sort of stopped me mid sentence and said, you know. Paul, let me assure you, Mr. Avery, he never, he never said Stephen Avery, it was always Mr. Avery, will spend the rest of his life in prison, yeah. which sounded to me like I've been given assurances further up the food chain that we've got this covered. But I, I saw you, I saw you, I, I did want to take, take you back. To, I forgot all about it at the time. What do we make of the state handing these bones back to Teresa? Um, that, that would be possibly for me, an indication that they were Teresa's, but you just don't know with this, this state of Wisconsin, do you? With the yeah. Garn and Fallon and... No, 
Oh, for sure. I think I'll just roll it back a little bit. Sure. Um, John Farrakh for a second. Yeah. If we're, if we're referencing the Wisconsin Supreme Court, because I haven't read that article. Right. Um, if, we're, if we're referencing the Wisconsin Supreme Court, Wisconsin's the Wild West, right? So anything yeah. goes. Yeah. Um, and we know only too well that there's a lot of dark money that has helped shape the, the Supreme Court and the circuit courts over the years, and in, probably in many states. But we know... Um, you know, we, we know a lot has happened in that space in Wisconsin. So I wouldn't be surprised in that case, right, in terms of making a murder a three. And I suppose you, you, you've you got people who, like, you know, genuinely will, will not travel to Wisconsin. Um, you know, the, the tourism industry perhaps would have taken a hit in 2016 for sure. And perhaps, you know, again, um, when making a murder a two came out. So there's probably a lot of different forces um, in play for that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I think... Um, what was your last question? Yes, it was to do with the bones <laughs> being handed back. Oh, yes. And, you know, is, yes. is that a... It, it could could that be more used in favour of saying they definitely are her bones, or, or or do we read anything into that at all? Well, if they're not her bones mm -hmm. and they gave them back to the Holbuck family, what what a absolutely disgusting thing to do! Um, nothing right? surprises so, nothing surprises us, it, though, it, does it? It doesn't, unfortunately, when we talk about Wisconsin. But for me, innately. Mm -hmm. When I think about the fact that they gave bones back to the family, um, I think that they gave back Teresa Holbuck's bones. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't believe that. It's it's such a stretch of credulity to imagine that they would give back animal bones or somebody else's bones to the Holbuck family. You know, for all intents purposes, what have we heard from the Holbuck family? We've heard nothing. So that would that would suggest that they feel that the right people are a serving time for the death of their daughter. Um, so for me, the bones going back, that suggests to me that they, they're Teresa Hobart's bones. Yeah, I mean, I mean how, how do we know, Paul, right? How do we know 100% of anything? We because don't. Because we, we, and we never will. We never will until somebody is actually convicted beyond beyond reasonable doubt, mm -hmm. beyond reasonable doubt. I'm not talking about convicted in the media. I'm not yeah. talking about supposition and I'm not talking about, you know, potential Brady claims being an actual conviction of somebody. Yeah. I'm talking about actually finding concrete yeah. evidence, DNA evidence that would lead to the killer, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, with all due respect to, to Miss Zellner and everything that um, she's unearthed, um, you know, there's there's so much, there is so much information. Mm -hmm. But for me to get Brennan and Stephen out, I think it's going to come down to something really concrete like DNA evidence. Sure. I mean, getting, getting back to the making a murder number three, I would, I would hope that Netflix and Laura and Moira would 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 still you know do a three even if it's to try even if it's to, to show the obstacles that the legal system are trying to put in place and the complicity of all these judges higher up the food chain you know that i i think i think that would still make for a really really powerful making a murder number three oh absolutely i can agree with you more and i think it would be even more reason for them to do it Yep. You know, um, when they did the making a murder of the first one, um, you know, the whole idea behind that was to capture the the criminal justice system, and I think by doing three, mm -hmm. that would continue that. Do you know what yep. I mean? It would continue yep. that trajectory of following, you know, these what we consider um, as wrongful convictions, and particularly to get into like you know the state sort of hierarchy and small town. Um, you know, policing and how that interacts with the courts and things like that. I think, yeah, I think it, I think it would probably be quite, you know, engrossing, right? Yes, I, I, and I, if, if I'm not mistaken, we left off 
at the end of season two with Seth Waxman looking forward to present Brendan's case to the Supreme Court. So, you know, we're, we, we've actually, um, think things have um, sort of developed immensely since then, haven't they? I mean, you know, that I'm, I'm sorry, but for me, the Scotus were a, a bunch of spineless gits, but uh, that's, uh, that's my own sort of take on them. Um, and, of, you know, it, it, it beggars belief that, you know, Stephen Law, they got six amicus briefs, amicus curiae briefs, and, and, and you know, Seth Waxman saying that, that, that there's not a single judge anywhere that thinks Brendan's guilty. Well, you know, but, but you can't help thinking that had Brendan's case been looked at and found in his favour, the knock-on effect of, of Stephen's case, you know, um, I, I think I think that's what they're afraid of, isn't it? I, I think, unfortunately, that it, it might be that we need to get Stephen out, and that's going to be the avenue for um, for Brendan. Although one hopes that uh, yeah. Stephen Laura, yeah, Stephen Laura are, you know, continue. I'm, I'm sure they are continually um, trying to do their best to. Uh, to um to help Brendan and I, well, we certainly know that you're doing your utmost to help with the the flyovers and the banners and uh <laughs> billboards it's uh... yeah I think you know there was an article from <coughs> Laura I think it was in about June or July and she said that you know they have investigators on the case mm -hmm. um, you know so I would take from that that they're more immersed in this than ever. Like Laura's very, very um, public in saying that she will not stop until Brendan is free. Yeah. So, you know, the fact that we don't hear anything, I think is, is not representative of the amount of work that's going on in the background for Brendan Dassey, nor yeah. for Stephen Avery, of course, with, with Miss Elner. But, you know, anything with Stephen, I, you see it everywhere, This the question of, if Stephen gets out, does Brendan get out? If Brendan gets out, does Stephen get out? Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like we we know that Brendan's team can use any of the newly discovered evidence that Miss um, Zellner has discovered yeah. um, to take Brendan back into the state court. But, you know, obviously going back into state court, they've got to have something pretty shit hot um, to follow that through. Um, there's, there's always the option as well, I was reading about this, that he can file another habeas petition, but you've got to get permission from uh, the Seventh Circuit in order to file a second petition. Um, but the, yeah, I mean, there's a, I, I would imagine um, that there's a lot going on for Brendan that we just aren't privy, privy to. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, it concerned me. Um... Not, not. It, it didn't really strike me during making a murder service to, but there is a um, a slight criticism by Kathleen Zellner of uh, of basically Steve and and uh, Laura for their um, showing at the, at the Seventh Circuit, okay. and and, yeah. and and really that was just uh, a, a complete sort of uh, ambush by those judges. You know, you've got idiots like Hamilton saying, you know, um, so are the, are the police not allowed to, to bluff, you know? Yeah. Well, Hamilton, yeah. guess what? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> they, state, there's they states are. now that are saying exactly yeah. that, you know, and, and yeah. I just wish Laura would have, would have, would have not have, have conceded. Oh yes, they, they are allowed to bluff. And she should have stuck to her gun and said, no, not to a 16-year-old who's got the mental age of an 11-year-old. No, they shouldn't do that. Jerry Buting outside pointed out, America, the only English-speaking country in the world where that would be allowed. Well, that's right, isn't it? I think it was um, uh, uh, deceptive interrogation practices were banned around 84 in England. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure Australia, um, even places like Germany, they've been banned for decades. Yes. Right? And you know, without saying anything about Germany, I mean, there's good cause for that, right? So, um, yeah, it, it's interesting. But the, the thing with the, the thing with the states is, and, and I learned this when I spoke to, um, this is going off on a different tangent, right? Because we were going to talk about the, the banning of um, deceptive interrogation tactics. But the thing about the states is, 
the interrogation practices aren't standardized. So oh. there's there's like 700,000 law enforcement officers, but there's 18,000 federal, state, county, and local law enforcement agencies. And these agencies aren't necessarily, necessarily aligned. So how how do you get the buy-in that the English got in 1984? Because obviously that was like a, a wholesale reform of how police questioning was carried out and officers would have had to have been retrained across the board, you know? So if you've got 18,000 standalone agencies in the US, um, all with their own ideological approach to interrogating juveniles and adults, um, that's, a, that's a big task ahead, you know? That's a big task ahead. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we can look at you would know this yourself, we can look at Fraser versus Cup, right? So that was the 1969 SCOTUS case that affirmed the legality of using deceptive interrogation tactics, right? So that's 52 years ago, mm. 52 years ago. Look at Reed, right? Mm. So Reed, uh, funny enough, Reed was developed by a law professor from Northwestern University, the home of uh, Stephen Drizzen and Laura Narida. Yeah. Um, and that's 75 years old now. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, we're looking at practices that have been mandated and adopted that are 75 years old. We're looking at cases that are applied to modern um, cases. Uh, I mean, you know, standards and what have you applied to modern cases that are like 52 years old. You know, it's um, so, it, it, yeah, just, just touching on that banning of deception. So how incredible was it to see you know, like the Innocence Project, the Centre on Wrongful Convictions, um, exonerees like Marty Tancliffe and Hubert and Terrell Swift uh, joining legislators. And uh, so Illinois and Oregon, and I think New York yep. is next in line with... Um, the interesting thing about New York, actually, is that it's not only banning police deception for juveniles, right, but it's also requiring the courts to evaluate the reliability of confession evidence before yep. allowing it to be used. Yep. And I mean, that perhaps is another conversation for us to have the idea of, you know, voluntariness, voluntary, voluntariness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, which is such a subjective and divisively interpreted standard mm -hmm. versus reliability. I think that's such an important question when we, you know, we talk about confession law and things like that. Um, because as we know, a confession is not subjected to the same standard and scrutiny as all other evidence. It trumps all other evidence. It contaminates the investigation from that moment on. Leads aren't followed. You know, true perpetrators are never found. And Brendan, um, uh, Jesse, Miss Kelly, both are, are cases in point, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it, it'll be interesting to see how, I mean, you look at the the recording, um, the electronic recording, how that's taken off. And I think there's 29 states that record to some degree um, in the interrogation room. Um, and I think, you know, there, there are states that actually adopt, adopt it themselves as well um, and, and use it without it being mandated. But yeah, I think, what is it? It's like 50 states have independently adopted the policy, but it's not mandated in them. Sure. But, um, so it'll be interesting to see if they get the same buy-in with you know, the, the banning of deception. Um, and an interesting fact was the same day that Illinois became the first and Oregon followed suit, we've got New York um, in play Mm -hmm. Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Delaware, and Washington State, and some others, I bet you Wisconsin was not among them, um, called officials in Illinois to, to inquire about what they were doing. Mm. Yes. You know? So it, it would be interesting to know if Wisconsin was interested. Like, you could only imagine they're not <laughs> going, going on their past performances and their current performance. Yeah, I mean, the, the John Farrakh, going back to that, the John Farrakh article is, you know, suggesting that, you know, there would be a very, very weak appetite for anybody involved in the legal system in Wisconsin, as I say, to have a the, the black mark of, you know, being the first state 
ever to wrongfully convict the same person yes. twice. Yes. Um, anyway, getting, getting back to this, um, when we were in Australia, when we went to um, the the first show at um, Sydney, um, it was noticeable. I, I felt that mm. Kathleen Zellner was mentioned once. Stephen Avery wasn't mentioned at all. And, and, and the only reason Zellner was mentioned was it was actually David Rudolph that said that of the, uh, you know, the Centre for Wrongful Convictions, they've got even more exonerations than Kathleen Zellner. And, 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 I, and I thought, this is bizarre. This, this is almost like they're in competition. And that's when I, when I went back to the sort of slight criticism, if you like, of, of Laura. I, I really hope that, you know, that, both Zellner and you know um, Stephen Laura are in constant touch, and and in particular the investigators are you know if you like sharing notes and uh, and, and really looking at it you know so, so that you get this sort of combined effect of the of the two of them you know, yeah. but it it must be difficult with um, you know with with Bobby Das's name in there it must be so difficult for them I, representing absolutely. Brendan. It would, it would be incredibly difficult for all people involved, you know. Um, I think in terms, if, if we roll it back even earlier than, you know, when uh, Stephen and Laura visited Australia and were doing the tours, Laura had always said that they will, won't talk about Stephen's case. Um, so I, I, I would imagine, like, you know, we're only, we're only commentating, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that they would be in contact with each other, of yes. course. Yeah. And you would imagine that there's a sharing of information that can benefit both cases. Well, um, that's that's what they said, certainly in Edinburgh, at the Queen's yeah. Hall, that they said, yes, they are, because that was one of the sort of questions at the end, you know, and they said, yeah, yeah, of course, we're, we're in touch, you know, we, of, of course, it's, you know, the two, you know, and it was asked if, if Stephen, Stephen Avery was to walk free, you know, uh, would, would Brendan automatically follow? And they said, well, not automatically, but you can rest assured the very next day, we would be uh, knocking on the door for Brendan, you know. Anyway, so, sorry, yeah. interrupted you. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I think it's, you know, it's a question that you see all around the community and on the, the different, um, you know, Facebook uh, site, uh, groups and things like that that people particularly people you know that are new and coming into <clears throat> the discussion yeah uh, is, is like does do they affect each other and I know that we can look say perhaps at um, Ryan Ferguson and Charlie Erickson and we know that obviously it didn't work out for Charlie Erickson the same way it has for Ryan Ferguson but they're different cases mm -hmm. they're different cases um, and you know, if Stephen Avery is, um, and hopefully, and if, and when, right, um, is released and, and exonerated, then, you know, what, what case is there to answer to? Mm -hmm. What case is there to answer to? So as we know, and it's been said so many times, like Brendan's case is words and words only, right? So yep. there's no DNA, which to some degree, uh, well, the DNA, there's more evidence to exclude Brendan from any yeah. crime rather than include him, you know. Um, so perhaps it's going, you know, you, you touched on Governor Evers leaving office and whatever, and tradition shows that a lot of, a lot of governors um, tend to do a flurry of, of pardons and, and commutations as they're leaving office. Yeah. Um, but we need more from the governor. We need him to, to, to have that um, instinct and um, decency now. But yeah. it will be interesting to see the, the politics play out for the election. Um, you know, I, I've, I've posed the question to a couple of the people who are running against him. And my biggest concern, and it's got not, I don't give a shit if anyone is a Democrat or a Republican. Oh. I just care about Brendan Dassey, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, when I talk about Rebecca Cleefish, I, th I think that's how you, you say her name. She was, you know, Lieutenant Governor to Scott Walker's governor for eight years. Um, they obviously had a shared vision, right? Um, she never responded on the pardons um, 
question that I posed to her, and of, of course she didn't, right? Um, but at the same time, that really worries me. You know, um, if you had somebody who was aligned probably morally, ethically, judicially with Scott Walker's stance on pardons, taking over the governor's uh, position in Wisconsin, then that's yeah. off the table altogether for Brendan Dassey. We don't want that, right? We don't yeah. want that. Um, you know, I get into a lot of discussions about Governor Evers and his apathy, his lack of backbone, all those types of things. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we've got to stay respectful. This is a man that hopefully can still be worked with. So, you know, he did reinstate the, the pardons board. He has, he's pardoned like almost 300 people at this stage. Yep. And yes, they're all, they're all pretty minor infractions, right? Yes. And his criteria is really arbitrary and, and weak. It's really weak. It doesn't mm-hmm. embrace the spirit of clemency um, in, in you know, any shape or form. It's like mm-hmm. expungement more than anything else. Yes, but yeah. You can only hope, you can only hope that um, there's still there's still room to, to work with Governor Evers, with somebody like Rebecca Cleefish. And like I said, this is not about her being Republican or Democrat. I don't care what she is. Yeah. Um, I, I care where she stands on pardons. And it's like anybody else that's running as well. Um, but, you know, if, if and, and here's the thing, right? So you can only apply for clemency, I think it's every 18 months. Right. And um, Brendan could have applied by now, his second time. So I do wonder whether it is a matter of waiting to mm-hmm. find out what's going to happen in the election for yeah. Governor Evers and then, you know, giving themselves space to um, apply before he leaves office, if that's the case. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, you know, when you talk about this stuff and you think about this stuff, every single moment is a moment Brendan's never going to get back. So all this waiting, yeah. all this waiting is just, um, you know, it, it's... Yeah, and, and, and also for me, um, you know, reading about it again, just refresh my memory this morning. It for me, if if we could get movement whereby you know Stephen Brendan, you know, justice finally starts to get down, and we see them released, the then you're opening up the can of worms that would um, that could possibly finally give. Um, uh, answers to the Ricky Hochstetler case mm-hmm. and, and and one that really bugs me I would love to see Kathleen Zellner get on board with Daniel Holt's claw case and, and try and get that one resolved because mm-hmm. that, that 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 really does uh, that's a really sickening one that the Daniel Holt's claw case you know when and you've got you know um I mean o- Oklahoma at the moment it doesn't seem to be covering itself with a lot of glory with the um, Julius is it Jones. Julius Jones yeah. pending execution and, and some others that, that, that are pending? Have I got that right? I know we're going off on a yeah, no, here. I think, I think the gentleman's name that was recently executed, um, John Grant, I could be wrong. Right. I could be wrong. Um, but, you know, for me, the whole idea of the death penalty is I just, I just don't understand. Like, you know, when I was reading the SCOTUS um, opinion, and I think his name was John Grant, God love him, I'm not sure. Um, I'm like, how easy is it for people to sign off on executing someone um, rather than trying to save a life, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, you commit a crime, you've, t- you've murdered someone. So right. to, to seek justice, we're going to murder you. I, it- I don't... No, like it's, 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 it's either that. it's either illegal or it's not. Yeah. If it's yeah. legal to murder somebody from the state point of view, then it was legal in in the first place for that person to murder somebody else. It you know it, it's just the logic of it. It's just, it, but but for me it's it's the fact that, you know, w- with us seeing so many wrongful convictions, you know, you you cannot bring back a dead person, you know, no. and and say we're really sorry. Yeah. And and that and that 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 I, I'm I'm sure that we we've had in the UK. There's been at various times, particularly with the IRA atrocities, things yeah. like Rowington, and you know, and and I'm not saying that there weren't atrocities over there in yes. in Northern Ireland and Ireland, but you know that that whole sort of um, uh, terrorism thing. You know, there, there, yeah. there's been calls from time to time to bring back the death penalty, and it's like. 
what what do you what do you want about you cannot you you know you cannot bring back somebody that's been wrongfully convicted if you've just gone and murdered them <laughs> yeah you know, it's, 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 yeah, Stupid. there's an error of margin, right? There's an error of mar. There's a margin of error, I should say. Yep. And there are what is it? At any given time, a hundred thousand wrongfully convicted people in the U.S. Yep. Um, you can't possibly seek justice through the death penalty when there is a, a margin of error that that person may be wrongfully convicted, mm -hmm. because we know that there are people wrongfully convicted in the US system. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, for me, it's it's like the the lack of humanity in the death penalty um, that just overwhelms me. I, I try not to think too deeply about it because I understand that people commit crimes, but the punishment of death, is, it, it's just, um, it's barbaric. Mm -hmm. It's barbaric in a civilized society. And I put that in brackets, like, are, are we a civilized society if we if we condone this? If you've got the highest court in the land saying it's okay, proceed, please, yeah. um, to execute this man, uh, uh, blows blows my mind, blows my mind. I follow uh, Sister Helen Prejean. I think that's how you pronounce her surname. Right. Um, you know, and the way she writes so eloquently about, um, you know, the issues with the death penalty and, and what have you. So I'd recommend anyone having to follow her on Twitter to, to immerse themselves in that. But, you know, the advocacy that's going on for Julius Jones is, is incredible. It's incredible. I think they've got 7 million signatures on a petition um, to the governor. Um, you know, you've got the parole board that, uh, you know, recommended to the governor to, to commute his sentence or it was like, you know, to, to not commute it, but I, I can't think of the correct words. It, it, it fails me now, but, you know, to the sentence to become life um, with parole yeah. rather than the death penalty. Sure. Um, oh, I can't think of the word for it anyway. So yeah, there's a, there's so much advocacy going on for people, you know, and, at what point, at what point do the lawmakers and, and, and you know, the judges find their own humanity in these situations? Well, it's Pontius Pilate, isn't it? They just yeah. wash their hands. I mean, you, you've probably seen the film Just Mercy about Brian Stevenson. I have Oh, absolutely brilliant. What about, yeah. have you had a chance to read that book by Radley Belko and Tucker Carrington, The no. Cadaver King and the Country Dentist? No, I'll I'll it. send you the the forward by John Grisham. Yeah, I've I've actually got the got it as a PDF. It's excellent. You you'll like yeah. it. Listen, I'm gonna have to say cheerio because I Sunday morning is is one of my busiest for uh, for doing lessons. So I've got to head oh, up head up the road to stay. Um, thank you for accommodating me being uh, getting mixed up over the times and uh, for the, for then uh, if you could see me now my trousers are completely covered in mud um <laughs> so i was thinking should i take my trousers off and i thought well no i, I better not do that you know even even though even though we're not live you know that that, that would be a bit too much you know I would it, get... it, it would be kind of it would be an interesting thought for me that you would tell me that at the end like yeah oh, i've just done this without <laughs> like, okay paul that's not uncomfortable <laughs> not uncomfortable at all paul okay uh, uh, yeah you, you you know what i'm like <laughs> <laughs> i do indeed I do i'm indeed. i'm just like the um, you know the muppet show the swedish chef i'm just here to <laughs> stir any pot i just stir any pot <laughs> oh goodness me uh, where would I, we be without you doing that huh oh uh, and and i tell you i used to i used to stir the pot something rotten when it came to the dude but uh i we still miss him we still miss him oh for sure for sure oh dear I often, I often would wake on a Saturday morning on my Twitter feed yeah. with Richard and you going, Tracy, what do you think about Captain Crunch? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, guys, really? It's yes. Saturday morning. You're coming at me with Captain Crunch? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, dear. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah he's yep. sorely missed, right? He's sorely oh, missed. Oh, definitely. When I see thumbnails of his videos and I see his face it's just yeah it's, it's difficult to believe he's gone but yeah. he left an incredible legacy of what he did and um 
you know, I think, you know, if, there, if there's anything that we take from Richard is that we've got to keep con- keep the conversation going. Absolutely. Keep the conversation going. We can't give up, right? We're in yeah. this six years. Yeah, six yeah. years. Who gives up after six years? All right. I, I mean, I mean, the dudes up there in the big YouTube YouTube studio in the, in the sky, annoying the tits off everybody by saying, <laughs> see that lot down there? It was me that started them off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. That's what he'll be doing. That's I. You, you, you just know it. You just know it. That's the, the, you know. He, he he'll never he'll never be quiet. No. no, that's you know that's quite a poignant thing to say. Yeah, that's quite a poignant thing to say. He'll yep. never be quiet. Yeah, true. We'll keep talking until they're walking. Yeah, we will. That was uh, that was uh, um, Sharon Sharon Sunshine's great. Uh, yeah. Uh, title. Um, and I, and I will get in with t- in touch with Mark again, and we must talk about doing another. Keep talking to their walking because it was it was good good the last one that we did, you know. And uh, it, oh, it was it, brilliant. Yeah, just just just, just keep things going. But uh, yeah, and and plus we we've got more we even more people that can host. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm looking forward, really, really looking forward to the day when Pete Dassey hosts his own chat, StreamYard chat, on his own YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm going to keep on at him. I'm going to keep on at him. And, I, and, and and if you could surreptitiously do the same, that would be good. Well, I think, Paul, he's got a great mentor in yourself, so just keep going. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Listen, Tracy, it's been absolutely brilliant uh, having a chat with you. Um Enjoy the uh, easing of uh, lockdown. It's uh, it's it's been uh, hard going. I know that. Um, and um, have a have a good. Um, what will be Sunday 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 evening for you? It's a Sunday evening. Yeah. And you know we've had a beautiful blue sky. Friday Excellent. we had 140k winds. I had trees wow. out the back down. Oh, it was mental. It yeah. was mental. Um, storms, you name it. Today the sun's out, it's warm, so I'm going to go for a drive. Um, and uh, yeah, just you have a good Sunday, my friend. Will do, will do. Okay. Talk again. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll my catch pleasure, you soon. All righty. Bye. Bye bye.